everyone. My name is Alex Meldra and I'm the lead developer and designer in these two blockchain projects, Weconomy and NX Solar. Uh, and this is now the beginning of our D app workshop. So a bit of disclaimer, this is going to get quite technical. So first we're gonna talk about a little bit what's a D app and what's a smart contract. Then I'm gonna tell you a few words about tokens and then a bit about the development tools needed for blockchain development. So we're gonna look at the development environment, some of the tools you need to develop these apps, and then we're gonna do a live demonstration of one token-based app. We're gonna deploy it to the blockchain and use it. So what's a D app? It's a decentralized app. And it means that the key business logic of the app is actually running on the blockchain. Uh, and the smart contract is the kind of like the code. That's the code which is running on the blockchain. And you could think of it in a traditional way, like the smart contract is here. When the, usually applications have a front end and a back end, then the smart contract is kind of like the back end here. And most of these D apps are Ethereum based at the moment. There are also other frameworks and languages, but in this workshop we are gonna use the Ethereum. Uh, and they are accessible usually through a browser. You need to have this MetaMask extension for your Google or Google for Chrome or Firefox. And then the Web3, which is a library which, which interacts, the front-end uh, app interacts with the smart contract. So the app is basically a front-end for interacting with the smart contract, aka the back-end running on the blockchain. So a few words about tokens. Well, I put there token really isn't anything special code-wise. It's just a smart contract with a specific set of functions. So you have a list of addresses and their balances, and then the smart contract just enables you to change these balances between addresses. There are a few standards for these tokens in the Ethereum world, like ERC20 or ERC721. In the end, we are gonna deploy one of these token contracts to our private Ethereum network. So what is needed for development. Again, we are going quite technical here, so you're gonna need some coding knowledge, node environment, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Solidity. Then there's this Truffleshoot, which is a framework for deploying these smart contracts easily to the blockchain. Then in this example, we are gonna use this local Ethereum blockchain called Kanache. It's running on this computer here, since in the development there is no point deploying to the actual blockchain. Then this Zeppelin Solidity, we're gonna use that for the token. It's basically a community-made, ready uh, token templates. They have been audited, they've been used in many applications, so they are safe to use for this. And of course, you're gonna need some good nerves, since there will be always some complications when developing for the blockchain. So, in this example, we are gonna create the NX token, the ENX token, which uses the ready-made open Zeppelin smart contract that I mentioned. So, someone has already created this ERC20 contract and we are just gonna implement it and build on top of it. And we're gonna do it as such that the user can actually request more of these tokens in the front-end app. Here is the kind of like the what's happening. So we have the front end D app, which interacts with the token smart contract on the blockchain via this MetaMask and this Web3. And we're actually gonna skip the creation of this front end app because that is more like coding a web app or a website. So I've already done that. But we're gonna look at the actual smart contract and deploy it to the test network. So here it is. I'll go through it 
line by line and you can then see what it contains. So, so in the first line we just tell this that this is a solidity which is the coding language of Ethereum. So we're going to tell the compiler that this is a solidity app. Then we're going to use the uh, token example created already by the Zeppelin, Open Zeppelin organization. We're just going to import it here so we can use all the functions that transfer the balances between the addresses so we don't have to code it ourselves again. Then here we actually mentioned that this is the contract, it's called NX token and it is this standard ERC to token that we have imported here. It has a name, we call it NX token, and it has a symbol ENX. So each of these ERC20 tokens, they all have their name and symbol. So if you see, have probably seen these tokens around in exchanges, they all have these symbols, three letter symbols. Then we're going to tell how many decimals this token amount has, and then we're going to as assign an initial supply, so we're going to have 1,000 tokens. This could be anything. I could print like, or put there like 20,000 tokens or 4 million tokens if I, if I would want to, but let's say it's 1,000 tokens. So this is the actual constructor function that creates this token. So it says that the total supply is the initial supply and then uh, it gives the uh, sender of this so whoever puts this contract to the blockchain it gives that address the initial supply but since we want to be able to create more of these tokens I have created this function called request tokens uh, that adds to the total supply 1,000 tokens and then any, anyone who calls this function gets 1,000 tokens to his or her balance added. So that's, that's the kind of contract we are dealing with here. Of course the actual contracts in the blockchain world are, they are far more complicated and they use a usually uh, split into smaller subcontracts, but for simplicity's sake, I've used this contract here. So, as I mentioned about the Ganache, this is a now a local Ethereum blockchain running on this computer. It doesn't have any access to any public blockchain. It is just for development purposes running on my computer. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to deploy this, uh, compile this token and then deploy it to this test network. So this is now the, as I mentioned before, the truffle suit. This has all these kind of capabilities that you can compile these contracts and publish them to the network. So I'm going to say truffle compile. So now it has compiled the contract. It has compiled it to a, this ABI, which is like a very low level uh, language that can be then put into the contract can now be published into the blockchain. So I'm going to truffle migrate is the function here. And now what it does, it puts that contract we had there, it puts it to the our local blockchain. And from here you can see that there has been some 
transactions happening on the blockchain. There's been some uh, contracts created and called. So our smart contract is now published on the Ethereum, local Ethereum blockchain. Now I'm gonna start the front end D app. Like, like I said, we don't do, the, we don't have to look at its code now. It's quite complicated, and I wanted to focus really on the smart contract. But now we're launching the D app. Uh, then I mentioned about this MetaMask, which is a basically a wallet for your browser, Chrome or Firefox, or I think there are others as well. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna log into this MetaMask browser, and what this browser does, it connects now to the private network, the private Ethereum network running on my computer. There are also available the main Ethereum networks, few test networks, but now we're using the local blockchain. Okay, now I got some Ethereum as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna unlock, these are now, there are 10 ready-made wallets with 100 Ethereum each in these wallets in this local blockchain. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna import one of these wallets here. I'm gonna take the wallet number three. Usually you don't deal with wallets like this, you don't show your pub private keys to anyone, but since this is a development environment, I can do it here. So now we unlock the account number three. So here is our D app. So what I said in the beginning, what you can do with this D app, so you can request more tokens. That was the function that was here. You can re request more tokens. So I have created a button here, which then calls that function on, this, on that smart contract. And then the address here, the wallet address we have here, gets those tokens on his or her account. So I'm gonna click this request NX tokens button. Now I get a notification that something is happening. I'm doing some sort of transaction with a smart contract in the network. Usually you have to pay a small amount of fee uh, in Ethereum to actually call these transactions on the smart contracts which are running on the blockchain. So I'm gonna confirm this transaction. And as you can see, it works, I got 1,000 NX tokens. If I press it again, it updates my balance. So it was a very simple example of a, how a D app works. So I'm gonna show you quick also the front end, a bit of it, I, like I said, I won't go very much into details because this is quite technical, but there are <coughs> functions that actually interact with the smart contract. They use that MetaMask wallet and the accounts in that wallet to interact with the smart contract on the network. <coughs> so that is it so far, do you have questions, feel free to ask. I know this is very technical, but yeah. Do those uh, variable names matter? Because there were there's some uh, uh, decimals and stuff. And, uh, they were not used anywhere. Ah, you mean this? Yeah. yeah, so I might have skipped that part. So these are actually required by this imported uh, token contract. I can show you that one as well. It's a bit more complicated. It's here. So they're used here. So this is the, like I said, we're gonna use the 
standard ERC20 token contract that someone else has already made. These are very, these are used widely in app, uh, in D apps, so we don't have to like recreate these functions. Since this standard requires that you have a set of functions, then it is a recognized ERC20 contract. So there are like functions like transfer from these, transfer these tokens from an one address to another. So we are just gonna import this contract and use it here to create our own token. Yeah. Have you a kind of block, uh, blockage slower in there, where it would be vi visible that there are these tokens and uh, Ethereum in the same address? Well, here you can see all the transactions happening. Like we did those two requests where we request that token. So here's one of those requests in the block. This is the block explorer. Okay. So then I'm gonna show you the actual uh, contract we are using in this front end, uh, in this D app. So this was a simplified version of the contract. So here is uh, the same contract, but expanded a bit. You can see there's now some new functions. There are actually new contracts as well if we want to like st have a user base or like store our users and their addresses we can build a contract for that and use it in our main contract so we can insert users or do some other functions for those tokens where you can stake them or you can uh, use this tokens and their amount to vote on some other things and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go into detail, but there are a lot of ways you can then use these tokens in your D apps. Yeah, please ask more questions. I mean, this, uh, like I said, this is quite technical and uh, if you want to know some details, so ask, yeah. Well, you can store any information, but it is not wise to store everything on the blockchain. Like, you cannot store, or you can store large data, but it costs very much, and it's not useful. Or if you have like pictures, you need to store them somewhere else and maybe then create a reference to that picture or something in the blockchain. So since it costs always to store data or to mutate the blockchain. And then you had a question? Uh, what are some examples of D apps that are popular? Well, I believe there aren't many <laughs> popular D apps at the moment, but I think most popular are those decentralized exchanges which work to the smart contract so you can trade those various tokens between uh, without any middlemen and then there are some also like you probably heard of crypto kiddies some of you have at least heard so that's a actually a one implementation of this ERC721 token that is uh, like a unique asset. Each crypto kit is a unique token, so to speak, in the blockchain. So you can trade those unique tokens and those kitties. Is there any kind of auditing utilities for to check now you have made some contract if the code is okay? And, and yeah, there are there's able to, you can create tests and then of course the most, usually all these smart contracts that are put on the public Ethereum network, they need to be audited by some third party or some one who has the ability to audit them. So it's wise to audit them bef 
at least somehow before you put them on that because it's quite hard to like reverse it you cannot reverse what is the scalability of that system so in terms of users and also latency so how fast are those transactions uh, well in the main ethereum network it can take up to minutes like uh, for the transaction to actually register so as you saw here when i pressed this request it happened almost instantly because it was running on this computer if i would do it in uh in the public network it would take could take minutes before it actually re registers the transaction so things are also very slow you have to take that into account when creating these d apps at the moment at least i mean there are of course scalability improvements being made constantly are there any kind of on the enterprise level or some private kind of uh, blockchains for this purpose that could be faster or more? Yeah, I believe private blockchains would be faster for this. If you would create a private D app and yeah. Uh, what's the most complex uh, D app or a smart contract you have built? What, what kind of you know things you have built? Well, actually I've been developing mainly two apps one of is this nx app this is simply a demonstration of how a token could be used in voting and uh, like uh, you could have tokens and you could have like a more weight to your votes the more tokens you own and stuff like that so and the other one is the economy project uh, i don't know if someone were here when nico was presenting earlier but economy is basically a it's a sharing economy app on blockchain so you can trade trade goods and services uh, via a smart contract so that's also another smart contract i've been working on and it is actually a bit more complex contract so there are things like uh, creating this uh, time lock or this like uh, the funds go to this escrow and they are locked in an escrow which is so they are basically on inside one of those contracts and when a set of uh, things happen then they're released to the other party and there are a bit more complex functions there but yeah but I'm I'm also a quite a big not that I already I begin my development with the smart contracts early this year so it's constantly constant learning for me as well and uh, uh, would you recommend uh, big four companies for auditing smart contracts uh, I actually don't know I believe they have some auditing services but since we have never yet published anything to the main Ethereum network, to the, only to the testnet, so we haven't used any auditing services. Yeah. I think it was this was a signal name, that abbreviation of your actual token name. Is there, is there any limit how long that could be, this ENX? Because usually there are three letters, yeah, I think but in some cases they are longer. I actually don't haven't checked it but I believe I, I have to believe that it should be three letters so if anyone knows better please comment yeah. so is everything in a dab I don't know this may be a stupid question but is everything coded in solidity or do you use kind of other languages yeah, there's also like languages for the front end. Uh, here you can use HTML, CSS, JavaScript. The front end also can be a mobile app. That's a bit harder to create, and we've been trying to do that with the economy project, but it's it's hard to create a mobile D app. Yeah, it's basically like the back end. As I mentioned, the smart contract is kind of like the back end for the D app, and it's the kind of the thing that makes the D app 
decentralized. So that's why I wanted to focus on the smart contract. Now that you have to make it this for a year or so, but in your major lessons learned, well, let's say uh, new companies start to focus on blockchain as they are going to be on this It's a broad question. Yeah. Well, the lessons learned, it's, it's, very, it's very new to everyone, this kind of development, and there's, there's sometimes there isn't much information. You really have to, like, Google and try to find the, if someone has had a similar problem. And the industry best ways are still developing. There are some, like, these standardized tokens and everything, but it's pretty much in the beginning, this whole app space. Uh, you, you said about uh, about uh, trading uh, goods and putting money in the escrow. Have you <laughs> dealt some, somehow with the volatility of, uh, of ether? No, actually. <laughs> That's a good question and we've been thinking about it. So. I guess stable coins is one Potential answer, but yeah. I do have a follow up for that. So, if you're trading the kilo of potatoes for a bicycle trip and you, they are equal of the value, then it doesn't matter the value of the token in euros. Yeah, maybe those stable coins could be one option for it. But. Uh, what kind of differences does it bring that, uh, for example, if I understand correctly, uh, Bitcoin Cash is in Turing complete uh, programming language, this uh, new kind of language, uh, Spedden, which can, uh, which enables people to create smart contracts. How much would it differ making smart contracts in Ethereum, which is Turing complete, against the Bitcoin Cash system? Uh, well, I haven't looked at that Bitcoin Cash language yet, but. <laughs> But as you know, the Rootstock project, uh, which is a project which brings the same kind of smart contract functionality, actually in the same language, the solidity, to Bitcoin. So there is a project that is bringing smart contract functionality also to the Bitcoin network. But I haven't looked into that Bitcoin cash yet. Uh, have you looked in uh, Zero X regarding the no, not yet. I've heard of zero X, but are there any more questions? So the ERC is seven twenty one is a non fungible token, so it means like each token is unique in ERC twenty one. So it could be like represent anything unique, like uh, like I said, the crypto kitty, and you can trade this to token. So each token is unique, and in ERC20, all the tokens are basically the same. It's like money. And in ERC20, you can divide the co coins or tokens, whatever you create. Yeah. With 721, you can't. It's just one full coin or token. Like crypto kitties, you cannot make half of crypto kitty and send. So it's like a unique crypto kitty. Each one of those is unique. As in ERC20, the, it's all the same token. Okay, if there are any, aren't any more questions, I'd like to thank you all for listening. I know this was quite technical, but hope you can at least get something good out of it. So thank you all.